In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Friction Joint 2D. So I've got my blue arm selected today. Let's go ahead, we'll mix this one up. <laughs> we'll go ahead, we'll add a Friction Joint 2D. And just like before, we'll go ahead and we'll just start this up, see what the defaults give us. And then we'll go over the components or the properties of the component. All right, so it fell down. Take note, it did bounce off of the rigid body, but not the colliders. It just went through and it's just falling down and down, as we can see up here. Let me just quickly redo that. I do want to emphasize that for the first parameter, the enable collisions, this has a rigid body on it, but this here is just a big box collider. So if we go ahead and start it up, it bounces off of here. All right, so let's go ahead and enable collision. And then with the enable collision checkbox checked, when we go ahead and start it, it won't go through. It's going to rest on them. Okay, so we got a bit of a behavior modification. I'm going to go ahead and leave it checked for now and come down to the auto configure connected. I'll zoom in for this. We'll go ahead, we'll switch over to the grab tool or the hand tools, I like to call it. And take note that there's two gizmos here. Let's zoom in a bit more. There's one in the center. This is the connected anchor and the one around the outside is the anchor. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the auto configure connected anchor. And this will allow me to actually move the connected anchor now. So think of it this way. This is where we want to connect to in world space. And this other one is where we want this game object, the object with the friction joint on to be connected. Now by default, it does say zero, zero, but that doesn't necessarily mean in the center of your game object, that's wherever your pivot point is. So if we had our pivot point over here in the center on the side, this dot, when it's at zero, zero, we would be over here as well. But let's just go ahead, we'll start this up and take note. It does the exact same thing, right? Nothing too special. Let's go ahead. I'm going to select the auto configure connected anchor. I spread this out. And that's going to go ahead, put everything back at the origin for me. And with it checked, I can move both of them around at the same time now. But I want them at zero, zero for now. Let's go ahead and start looking at some of these other properties. So we have max force and max torque. I'm going to start with max force first and let's crank it up to 80. Why 80? Well, because I've done enough of these videos that I know for this particular rigid body on my character, 80 is good. If I jump on it now, notice that it doesn't fall down instantly. It has a certain amount of force lifting it up. And I can also push this around with force from my character. Now, because it's so tippy, I'm going to go ahead and increase the max torque. I'm just going to put that to 100 for now, just so I can show this a bit better. The torque stops the rotation, or it doesn't really stop it. Think of it as dampening it. It's going to slow it down from whatever amount of force you put onto it, uh, slowing it down to well, eventually zero. The higher the amount of torque and force you put on it, the faster it slows it down. So now when I jump on it, not so tippy, but take note that when I do hit it, it slides down. And when I jump off, it does not go back up. And we can move it around. I'm trying to get underneath it here. There we go. Jump up, hit the side. So all right is a ton of uses come to, coming to mind on how I'd want to use this in a game. Oops, missed. Hit the water. That's fine. Now I'll come over here, jump again. So I like to think of it as if I have some sort of, maybe I've got a tank shooting down a wall instead of just having the wall sit there flashing every time we got hit. Maybe you want the wall to move. Or maybe I've got lava down here and I've got platforms you can jump on, but you can only jump on them so many times before they end up below the lava, in which case you can't use them. There's a lot of different scenarios that you could use this for. So what about brake force and brake torque? Well, just like the rest, if we go ahead and enter some values in here. So if, if I get more than 50 force in any one direction, this joint is going to break and the platform itself is just going to come falling down. Likewise with torque, if it's too much torque in any one direction, it'll just break and fall down. There we are, we broke it. So not the most complex joint, but it's still one that I'm probably going to have a lot of different uses for. Let me know down below in the comments, what are you going to use it for? Is there something that I haven't covered already that you got a perfect idea for? Let me know down below. Actually, let everyone know down below. Actually, before we go, I forgot to look at the connected rigid body. So we'll just go ahead. We'll use the polygon. I'll connect it that way. And without the enabled collision on, 
this can go through it. So I'm going to just go ahead, jump on it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lower the force here. And I'm going to increase this to 200. It can still be twisted, but not as much. But I should be able to ride this all the way down. And take note, it was colliding uh, uh, with the, the collider, but it goes right through the object that it's connected to. If I go ahead and enable collision, it will not go through the rigid body that it's connected to through the connected rigid body. We'll jump back up, slide down, and notice it won't go through it now. Anyway, there we go. Now we've covered all of its properties. So go ahead and let us know down below what are the plans that you have for this joint. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.